Hey guys, welcome back. This is Professor Hank. In this video, I'm going to show you really quickly how you can pass uh, file stream objects to functions in C++. Right. So, um, you know, when you have a OF stream object or an IF stream object or an F stream object, right? Um, you can pass these things to functions, and then you can have the functions perform uh, different operations on the file, right? Or on the file stream, I guess you could say, to be um, more precise. And in this way, you can break up your interaction with the files by using functions, right? So you can modularize that whole interaction, okay? And uh, what we're gonna do is, is we're gonna create functions that are gonna have um, parameter lists that have, you know, an OF stream object or an IF stream object or an F stream object, okay? Um, and you're gonna wanna use pass by reference with that. And um, once you've passed a, one of these file stream objects by reference into the function, then just like with anything else you pass by reference, whatever you do to the parameter, you do to the argument. And so, you know, if I pass, you know, some IF stream object by reference to a parameter, say, call it F, you know, whatever I do to F in that function, I'm doing to the IF stream object argument. So I could do something like f.close or f.isopen within the function, okay? So we'll be able to break up the, um, you know, opening of files, um, checking to see if a file uh, had opened, verifying if it had opened, um, you know, processing the file, closing the file, all those things. We can spread them across functions. We can modularize that whole process, okay? So uh, it's actually pretty simple and, um, you know, let's just, let's just dig into it. Let's take a look at a coding example. Okay, so here we go. Um, I already created a file called numbers.txt. It's in the same location as main.cpp in my Visual Studio project folder. And it just has a set of integers, uh, one integer per line, okay? And so what we'll do is we'll run a program uh, that will print out the contents of that file on the screen, and then um, we'll you know, break that process up, we'll break that code up into different functions, okay? So if I'm gonna read from a file, I need to create an IF stream object, right? And um, you know, I'll call it, I'll call it fin for, F, for, uh, for file in, right? Instead of CN, the console in, we'll call it fin. Uh, for file in, okay? And so then I have to attempt to open the file and I called it numbers.txt, okay? And then if fin dot is open, then I would want to write um, from the file or, or read from the file, I should say, and then write to the screen. Otherwise, you know, tell the user um, that there's some problem, right? Error, okay, whatever. Okay, now, if the file opened, and only if it opened, then it makes sense for me to process it and then close it. So I could do something you know, like this, I could say int x, and then I'll use fin to read into x, and then, um, then I could see out x onto the screen, right? But I'm gonna wanna put this inside of a, I'm gonna wanna put this inside of a loop, so that way I'll get all of the numbers out of the file, right? And so um, the uh, stream extraction operator will return true whenever you have a successful read, uh, false otherwise. So every single time it successfully reads from the file, it will read the number into X, will print out the contents of X, but once it gets to the end of the file, it will fail in the read. And so, you know, this thing is going to evaluate to false and then we'll break out of the loop. Okay, so let's test it and see what we got. Okay, so there's the numbers uh, in, that I have in the file, 10, 20, 15, 18, 77, and three. So that works. And um, it's for IF stream, I'm using IF stream here, right? So now what I'm saying is, is, let's write some functions. Let's break this up, okay? So how about we make a function that is responsible for opening the file, right? So I'll call this file open. And um, we'll use a, string variable and or string object and uh, we're going to pass the if stream 
uh, object by reference. Okay, now let me pound include string here for the string variable. Okay, so there's my prototype for file open. We'll have one for file close. Okay, and um, how about we have one for test file? Um, I'm going to say that. Should we do that? Yeah. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll do it. Uh, we'll, what we'll do is, is we'll have um, we'll have file open return a boolean, and then if it um, successfully opened, it'll return true, um, false otherwise. Right. Okay. So we'll do that, and then we'll have void uh, print file. Right. The contents of the file. Okay. So yeah. So that's what we'll do. So let's take that file open and do that first. Okay. So I'll call the parameter for the ifstream object uh, f. And so what we'll do is, is instead of having the open statement out here in main, we'll go ahead and uh, put it in the function. And so we'll do something like, um, oh, let's see, we'll say, um, f dot open s right and then we'll say uh, if s dot is open um, will return true oops it should be f not s because i'm testing my file stream object right f okay so return true um, otherwise return uh, false okay so then what I could do is I could get rid of this thing and I could call my uh, file open function here, right? Or if that looks kind of gross, maybe I'll put a Boolean variable in here, uh, is open. And then um, we'll say is open equals file open numbers txt and then we'll pass the file stream object okay um, and then we'll put inside the if is open and we'll just do this you know one step at a time and we'll see that you know it's it's going to work we'll break it up into one step at a time okay so there's all the numbers again okay and um, my file open function is now responsible for trying to open the file and then letting us know if the file opened successfully or uh, if it failed to open. Okay, so now let's get a print file. Let's write that. Print file. And so the code that we had in main, right? All this right here, we'll just throw it inside the function. And called it F there, so we should call it F here also. Okay, the prime name is F, so I had to update that. So now we'll go back and uh, inside that if statement again, we'll go ahead and we'll do a, what was it, file print, All right? That's what I called it, yeah, file print. And we'll pass it the if stream object by reference, okay? And, um, oh, it's print file, sorry, print file, okay? So let's do that. So I'm just, you can see that it still works. All I'm doing here is just breaking the sequence of statements up, you know, the, the whole process into separate functions, right? I'm having each function be responsible for its own little thing. So uh, file close, its responsibility is just to close the file. So f.close, okay? And so, um, Let's see. What am I, what am I, oh, there was a squiggle there, and I was like, what did I miss? I didn't miss anything. It was just Visual Studio's um, IntelliSense not updating fast enough. Okay, so then we'll go ahead and we'll call file close. Okay. So, there you go. Works fine, just like I hadn't used any functions at all. So, yeah, I mean, passing file stream objects two functions, just do it by reference. You know, you have a parameter that is 
you know, whether it's IF stream, OF stream, or F stream, doesn't matter. And um, remember, when you pass by reference, holds true here, just like it holds true with integer variables or anything else. Whatever you do to the parameter, in this case, parameter F, you do to the argument. Um, in this case, thin, right? So when I said f.open, since it's by reference, what I was really doing was thin.open, okay? So yeah, so I mean, that's all there is to it. Um, so just pass it by reference, and then within the function, you can use that reference parameter to do whatever you would normally do outside a function or without a function, right? Okay, so that's gonna bring this video to a close. If you felt that the video was useful, please consider giving the video a thumbs up. And if you thought that the video sucked, well, then you've got that thumbs down button as an option as well. If you'd like to see more videos, if you're interested in more content from the channel, feel free to hit that subscribe button. And as usual, if you're a student of mine and you have further questions, feel free to drop me an email or to stop by my office hours. Okay, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.